Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a very nice Earl Grey. So welcome back to the game. In the previous series of videos, we were going through the Heroes and Villains DLC, specifically in the Conquest mode. One as standard and then a follow-up with the Cultists. And we had some interesting fights, some decent interactions with our neighbours and indeed tried the Heroes and Villains, some of which are very statistic-based. So they just give you bonuses. Some have some really cool abilities and that was fun. This is going to be a bit of a sort of solo standalone vid, more about building and specifically looking at Tier 0 technology if we go to design and fight an airship editor and open up what i think is one of our best designs it's the bumblebee and it's all using zero tier technology it's a suspendium dust tanks it's got sails it's got ballistas even the crow's nest is tier zero technology i believe anywhere and well the whole idea is that it's very cheap it's well it's 1226 but for what it is and what it's armed with it's actually very very effective we want to try out something similar but it's going to be a land ship and there's two new weapons as far as i can tell there is well now there's a an arcing system in the game so we have essentially have weapons drops we have a mortar here and it says indirect fire weapon that launches cannonballs this is an arcing projectile so it fires it and it will go up and over interesting um it has a maximum accurate range of 280 meters so actually very very uh, short actually it's not flamethrower short but it's very short and it also has a 0.5 percent accuracy against airships and 0.7 percent accuracy if it's fired from an airship so because that's not classed as a stable platform we get negatives for firing it from an airship and an airship <laughs> airship uh, from and to other airships so yes mortars on an airship versus another airship is pretty much pointless however a mortar or in this particular particular case a trebuchet yes that again static structures that might be interesting so let's go with the trebuchet it's a large siege engine piercing damage of 75 meters splash damage eight second reload time fire arc is 60 degrees and the maximum range is 400 meters so still quite short when you can well let's come for that great shot cannon that's 100 meters let's go with an actual just straight up cannon that's 950 meters okay it is an arc projectile and it requires four crew members. So what we're going to do is make the smallest vessel possible in order to move this thing and as low tech as we can make it. Speaking of low tech, we now have propulsion wheels. So normally you've got tracks, which is tier one technology, large tracks, tier one, legs is tier two, large engines, tier one, there's your engines there and that's yes we've got wood, wooden wheels on it as well so that's all tier one but we don't want that we want literally wheels and then worms so add this module to fix an issue with your design it is a team of worm lizards pulling the land ship and that's what we're going to use so it's the lowest tier possible so let's go ahead and we'll go with maybe a couple of large wheels what i'm going to do here i'm just going to click everything together until it basically stops shouting at us for what we can and can't do so we'll place that in there we'll place actually probably no, that in there. We will need a cockpit. We will need in some basic uh, corridor with ladders and run resources. We'll need a supply hatch. And, oh, yes, ammunition as well. And there we go. That is technically a legit vessel. Uh, 241 generic units of currency. I reckon we can get that cheaper. But let's work with... Let's work with this in mind, okay? So we're going to try and make this, and I'm going to maybe... <laughs> is there anywhere we can... Oh, no, there really isn't. I was going to say, is there anywhere we can get a crow's nest in? And technically we could if it was there or there, but that means... <laughs> well, the crow's nest would be that. <laughs> with the crow's nest on top. Um, yeah, I'll, I don't think I need that extra 10% accuracy that a crow crow's nest provides is it 10 percent it is it is um yes by 10 increases weapon accuracy by 10 okay so let us build this thing so that's going to go in there we're going to have an ammo store in here we'll have corridor with ladder we'll have supply hatch we'll have in this thing and then the cockpit and then that can go on the front perhaps so we could probably put it further down if we do so desire um i actually no oh, it's too heavy let's put on let's put another large wheel on here actually can i put that there and then put a large wheel in front of it i can that is um oh sorry uh 241 and that would work i 
don't really like the look of it with this wheel at the front. I'll tell you what we could probably do. We could put that out the front and put some maybe basic wheels in here. Oh, I like that. I like that design better. Yeah, okay. This thing sticking out the front is still a cause for concern, I'll be honest. But can we do anything about it? Probably not. Okay, 222 for this design. Do I need that wheel? Yes, I do. So, yes. I don't know how... It says requires ammo. Hmm. Reload time is 8 seconds. It doesn't say how much it takes. And I realise we can't put fires out. We could put a fire point on board, but that would increase the cost by a noticeable amount. And, well, yeah, we'd have some problems manoeuvring. If it was there, I guess you could put it... Oh, that's interesting. So I can build up the front here like this. And it would actually be fine because it's an arcing projectile. Oh, that gives us options for builds. Anyway, we're not going to have that. And let's have this as... As the sloth. Save design and we'll see what this is like. And, well... <laughs> yes, this is going to be the interesting one. So we're going to add a land ship. We're going to go for the sloth. And it's going to be placed, well, there, because it needs to be as close as possible to whatever the structure is. Add a building, and we are on... There's the Keeper of Crows. Let's place that in there. And we are 222. There are three, uh, 338. So they have the advantage there. So there's our vessel. And if I say ram to there, would it work? So all ahead full. And there it is. The creatures are slowly pulling it forward. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, we're not in range of anything, which is why we are going forward. Good grief. Um, okay. This thing is... I mean, it's ridiculously slow, right? <laughs> is this even viable? <laughs> it's stuck. And we're going to lose the weapon on the top. Right, it's gone. <laughs> Hmm, um, so we'll leave that fight. Let's go back into that and try, try again. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it does say it's, it's ridiculously slow. I mean, we knew this going in. Um, <laughs> it says it's too heavy and you may have problems maneuvering. I mean, I don't know what the, oh, what the solution would be, but anyway, a building. We're going to put the same building in, and this time we're going to put it to a point where we can actually shoot. Oh, hang on. Here we go. It's launching. And there it goes. And it's arcing over. And... Oh, it missed. That's um, a bit of a disappointment. Full speed ahead. I mean, it's technically full. Oh, and then one shot just hit there. And that's not good. That's coming in. And... Yep, great. We've we've hit the ground again. Um, we are We are indeed burning. I think this is a case of... Sometimes you just don't go super cheap. Oh, did that hit? It did actually hit. Yes, this is good. We've hit something. And uh, there's another shot. Ah, shots fired from left to right are less accurate, which is exactly what we're doing. There's another shot. And good hit. Very good hit. It's no longer under command. It's a bit warmer than when we started. And there's another shot. Missed again. I mean, naturally, it's going to, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's burnt out. Okay, combat once again. Uh, let's go with maybe a day fight. There's the sun coming up. We'll add land ship. Let's put one, two, three, four, 888. And that means that we can put the orc against it. Again, we are going to basically cheat and give us at least some chance... Because we are slowly headed towards this thing. I fear the trees may stop our progress. No, we are we are chipping through them. I love the uh, <laughs> the lizards just dragging this thing forward, and the fact that they're conforming to the to the ground. That's really good. Um, I have a feeling we're just going to stop though. Yeah, that's. Uh... Yeah, we're not we're not in range, and we're not gonna we're not gonna get there. Okay, so <laughs> what what is like the 
I don't really know what the best course of action is, really. Like, we c it's never going to be on Rocky Mountains. We're never going to be able to put it there. Uh, sparse grassland in the day. Let's let's give us the best, best, best chance. Uh, we'll go for a land ship, and we're going to put the sloth in. And one, two, three, four. All right, there's them four. We're going to add building, and we're going to go with the orc, and the orc's going to go there and start the fight. And, oh, we're in range. We are in range. We fired one shot, and it missed, because of course it did. Anyway, I've told them to come forward. They are indeed driving forward. There we go. And shots out, which is good. And good hit right in the center of the structure. Excellent. So, let's be honest, right? It's it's slow. It's firepower is exceptionally poor. It's range is exceptionally poor. It is very, very cheap. But, um... That doesn't really matter when you can't actually get in. We've already lost two of our weapons and we fired three shots. <laughs> I mean, there's cost effective and then there's just pointless. And this is definitely the latter. Okay, leave combat. We're going to give it one more try. Um, Highland Ruins on the daytime. The reason is it's not going to matter because Sloth, one, two, three, four. We're not obviously assigning any ha captains or heroes. It's going to be a building. It's going to be the Orc, which is technically underpointed. And we're starting right at the front where everybody's in, everybody's in uh, range. So we are... We are underpointed. Sorry, they're underpointed. We have more points than them. We've started in a position that is not natural, as in we are rear at the front and that structure is at the front. It would not normally be there. It would be right at the back because why would it not? Let's not even consider the difficulty of getting here in the first place. Because getting here would require... Well, look at that. That looks pretty good. There's the... There's the stone. Uh, yes, getting here would require actually travelling on, along a road in the campaign mode, if we were to play conquest mode. And, uh... Yeah. I mean, I know that Orc is okay. I wouldn't say good. It's okay. It's just a... It's, it's just a... A Tetris piece with loads of cannons on it. But... We've already lost two vessels. They're technically still in existence, but as soon as the weapon goes, or as soon as fire goes on it, we've lost, because it will just burn. In terms of ammo, it looks as, yep, they do fire. It is one, it is one ammo per shot, so we don't need any bigger ammo store. I mean, to be fair, it causes a lot of damage when it hits. 70 damage, I believe. I like the recoil on them as well. So we might win. If we get another explosion or something, we might actually win. Uh, we're about to lose the weapon on... Yep, on that one. So we're down to... We're down to one weapon. All engines forward. Oh, hang on. Oh! No! No! Oh no, so it looks like the the worms, it looks like you can lose the worms. I think you can lose the worms, because we can't move, so have they just been shot? I, I, th I think so. Okay, um, I mean, I don't know if this is the worst. I don't know if it's the worst thing I've ever made. No, it's not the worst thing I've ever made. The worst things are the daft things like, oh, we'll make it with a big spike on the front and use it as a ram. Or go above with heavy weights and just drop down on top of them. Those are the worst things. But this is probably the worst thing I've made. <laughs> that I didn't design as something daft. I actually thought it might be quite good because of how cheap it was. That... Uh, 
that's not the case, <laughs> is it? It really isn't. Okay, we're gonna go with um, yes, a desert dawn. No, desert dusk. Maybe. Hmm. Let's try. I mean, what am I even gonna put against it? <laughs> it's, is there much point? Let's go with day fight. Add land ship. I mean, I can't even think what else you'd pair it with to make it any better. So that's three of those, 666. And we'll put against it. I mean, if you put the fox against it, we're just going to get absolutely hammered. The adder, we can't defeat that. The llama. Okay, there you go. So we're putting the llama against it. Okay, we'll add another vessel on. So, sloth. So we are 888, it's 843. So we're very close. And, yep, we've took an aerial off. And there's them firing back. Oh, look, it's arcing around. So in the campaign, we didn't really see the arcs like this because um, we were we were always above them, so it was firing down. But this is firing up and over, and it's arcing like a javelin would. That's actually looking really good. Do these things have a minimum range, actually? I don't think they do, which it feels like they should. I mean, not really. Once it's let go, it's job done. And I can see against wood, it causes ridiculous damage. So this llama here is probably the worst thing besides this that we've made. I say worst thing. It's just a bit pointless. It costs 800 and... Was it 43? Yet for 1,200, you can get a version of it which has the same, if not more, guns that can also fly and is faster and everything else. So we just decided to make a, a, a very cheap... A very cheap version of the llama. Sorry, of the, uh, the bumblebee and that was in the form of the llama. So, I mean, we can ram. We might as well use it as a ram. But, no, we've lost... We've lost our propulsion. This can ram, then. And... Oh, hang on. Hang on. We are... We are indeed uh, able to get near it. It's got one, two, three, four weapons left. But I don't think the top weapon is going to be firing for long. No, it's stopped. It ceased, it ceased its fire because it's, uh, it's out of ammo. So we just need to target the front. Ah, oh, we are coming them out of the sun. The advantage is ours. Good hit and secondary explosions. Yes. Brilliant. And there it is. Wait, we've split it in two. But it's still firing. How much health have we got left? We're on half health, the trebuchet. Oh, brilliant, yeah, take out the gun that's uh, got no ammo. Brilliant. Actually, I think it's out of ammo completely. Are we going to get a win? We might get a win off this. And the course is stuck to the bottom of the cup, dropping and then scaring the hell out of me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we might get a win off this. Although we only have nine shots left in order to get that win. There we go. It's collapsed. Yes, glory belongs to us. We are victorious. A mobile, a mobile, a mobile, and survived. <laughs> okay. Well, it is, without a doubt, terrible. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know these things until you try it. Okay, I'm going to open up the sloth. I'm going to remove this. Gonna move the weapon, bring this closer in. And on the back, let's uh, put a ammo storage. And on the four, actually we don't even need to do that, we can put it there. We're gonna go with weapons, deck gun, no, mortar. Oh, oh, um. Ah, so mortars you have to stack like this. Okay. That is doable. Right, let's um let's do this then. 
this is a test bed. Let's go with... Probably just... You know what? Structural... Deck. Let's remove all of that. Deck with ladder. And there we go. <laughs> SP test. And it's going to overwrite that. Not a problem. <laughs> and well, let's try. Add landship. The test. There's the range of the mortar. Again, very poor. And I think we're well under crewed as well. Against it. Keeper of Crows, start the fight. Good opener, though. Very good opener. One advantage we have is that because of where the because of the decks are all open, we can actually see all the crew navigating around. They fire very fast, them mortars. How are we doing damage-wise? Damage is actually pretty good. All right. I could see those mortars being quite effective. Very close range, but the fire exceptionally fast. Accuracy is actually spot on. I don't think I've seen anything miss so far. One miss there. I mean, is that a win? Probably. Bullseye. Firing again. No target. That's it. That's a win. All right. All right. I'm picking up what it's putting down. Launch your better Weapons wise, mortar. And trebuchet. So, trebuchet. Piercing 70, mortar is piercing 72. Better. It is a tier 1 technology, though. Splash damage 5 meters. Splash damage nothing on the mortar. Reload time 8 seconds as opposed to 3. Fire arc is bigger on the mortar. See, so it's firing down over rather than a flat arc. Not that it matters because it's arcing projectile. 400 meters and <laughs> the mortar is actually less uh, in terms of its range. 280 Okay. And I didn't realise you could actually do that. You can select them and drag them around now. Nice. And yes. May explode and flammable. Whereas this doesn't, the trebuchet, but it's also exceptionally poor. I assume armour. Doesn't do anything against that? No, it doesn't. Well, that is a little bit of airships conquer the skies. We've tried out the trebuchet, and we've tried, admit, admittedly, a uh, very small sample of one, the mortar. The trebuchet I'm going to write off is pretty much pointless. <laughs> it probably isn't. There will be some uses. They elude me at this current stage. I mean, if you haven't got the technology, trebuchet is better than nothing, right? But realistically, tier one, you start with it, unless you set it otherwise in for the default modes. Hmm. Okay. Hazar rifle as well, which is like a like heavy caliber rifle pulled straight over Hazar skiff. I've always been, I've been wanting to make like a just Hazar rifle like system. That would be nice. Something to build around that. Just accurate. One hundred and ten meters. Not really, but it does have a twenty-four piercing damage, which is well, it's half of a cannon, <laughs> so it's pretty good. But then you might as well just place cannons for cost. But anyway, uh, I guess rate of fire would be much better on that. Uh, 1.8. Oh yeah. Much better. Anyway, I digress. So, yes, the trebuchet. Mm, fun, but ineffective. In the scenarios that we've uh, pitched against here. The mortars. I'm interested in making something with that. I'll probably make a tier 1 airship. Oh no, because it's a reduction in accuracy if it's fired from an airship. Okay, tier 1 ground vessel. 
I wouldn't use wheels and worms. They're just too slow. I'd be tempted to use engines, though. With the wooden wheels. But that's tier one. Tracks are tier one as well. I'd probably just go with tracks. What's the difference in price? Tracks are 218. Engines are... Oh, 128. Oh, and you can go with steel wheels as well. Okay, I'll have a think about that. Let me know what you think in terms of the sloth and what is... Is there a thing we could... I don't know. <laughs> is there something we can do to fix it? Uh, you can go variants in worms. Oh, yeah, it's just the, the framework. Yeah, you can, what do you think is is the downside? Is it just everything? Is it just too cheap? Is it just too... Uh, too low tech? Is it too slow? If it was faster... And to be fair, it did say it was too heavy because the trebuchet is absolutely massive. Yeah, 800 weight, whereas the mortar is 100. Maybe if we had bigger, more wheels on it, it would be better. But even then, ground clearance is an issue. So, I don't know. 42 propulsion, the worms provide. The standard tracks are 310. So... You'd have to have ten, to, uh, about eight worms to get the same amount of power with tracks. It's probably why they moved away from it. Anyway, that's been a bit of an airship's conquer the skies. Marking it down here as fail. It didn't work. The sloth is, yes, cheap, and that's the best thing you can say about it. But the fun is always in finding out. We found out. Probably never to use it again. If you have any tips, comments, suggestions for ways to improve the build, different builds you would like to see, uh, focuses on any particular weapon or system or ways of doing things, whether it be boarding, bombing, whatever, then by all means, let me know in the comments. As always, hope you have enjoyed this look at airships. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.